Hey, it's Flannel Boy. Hmm, it seems a bit nippy in here. Let's go see what the weather's like. It's Ithaca out there. Man, my god, I got my flannel on. So today we are going to talk about a train wreck of a career. This meaning that the career path most resembles that of the band Train, who have dipped in quality of a serious capacity, but are still a lot of fun to check out. I know that if any of Train's songs weren't given the crazy and hilarious ramblings of Pat Monahan's life, the tunes would be too annoying to bear. But every single time... Cracks me up. Brilliant work, Train. Brilliant work. So I present, for your consideration, Nicolas Cage. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Now, Nick began as a regular actor in regular movies. Roger Ebert even called him great at one point, and he won the Academy Award for Best Actor for Leaving Las Vegas, breaking Tom Hanks' hot streak with two. Not that he was nominated that year. But then, somewhere along the line, Cage stopped making films that were nominated for Academy Awards, and then any awards at all, and now there's this whole subreddit thing called One True God on him. Here's the thing. Somewhere along the line, he lost a very important word from his vocabulary, and that's... This word is, like, the first word that infants learn. No. Hey, Nick, wanna be in a movie that combines Good Night Moon with a documentary about Richard Nixon's war cabinet? Mm-hmm, and who would I be playing? A 20-year-old Kim Jong-il. I'll take it. Now, I'm not gonna pretend these types of jokes haven't been floating around, people pitching the most ridiculous ideas to Gage and having them accept, but man, how can you go from Academy Awards to Mr. Yes to Everything that fast? Well, let's find out. First of all, I find it fit to mention that Mr. Cage's uncle directed Pat and the Godfather and Apocalypse Now. The official reasoning behind this name change is that Nicholas Coppola... Note that there is no H in Nicholas. Decided to change his name so that he wouldn't get famous just because his uncle was Francis Ford Coppola. However, I personally find it much more likely that the entire Coppola family was originally named Cage and then changed their name so they wouldn't be associated with him. And yes, that would also mean that they knew beforehand what would happen to him. What did you see, Coppola family? What did you see? Cage started, as Coppola, in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He was with Sean Penn again in Racing with the Moon, had a starring role in the Coen Brothers Raising Arizona, and got his first Golden Globe nomination for Moonstruck in 1987. By the way, he was in Valley Girl, which I think would explain the accent he's got on him. Ahem. Now the first time he won anything was that Oscar for Best Actor in Leaving Las Vegas. He beat Sean Penn for that one, who would go on to win the award himself twice. Sean Penn is also making bad movies now, but those ones aren't any fun. Feeling like I'm missing something about Nick Cage's early career. Oh yes, Vampire's Kiss! This is what gives us this little gem. Cage plays a literary agent who is going insane and believes he is becoming a vampire and abuses his secretary. This was actually received pretty well and is really fun to watch because, as we now know, Nicolas Cage is really good at acting crazy. Q-R-S-T-U-V! Do you act like things? Huh? There you are! He wasn't done yet? Oh no, not by a long shot. Here he is in Face Off on PCP, thinking up the premise to the film. And wow, this was a great idea. Having Cage and Travolta, the two quintessential insane Italian actors, well, two of the three, do impressions of each other made for some really fun scenes. Cage was actually downplayed and Travolta went nuts this time. Of course, there's the obvious problem that the actors don't actually switch faces, so when John Travolta is playing Nicolas Cage's character, he doesn't speak with Cage's voice, which is significantly lower. I can at least give Travolta points for trying his best to replicate Cage's Southern Cali accent, especially since Cage doesn't even attempt Travolta's New Jersey one. The writing is hackish, especially that Mexican standoff towards the end, but that's not the point. I'm judging acting, not films. And this film was an experiment in acting, and a successful one at that. I think a part of Cage's problem is that he was typecast into roles as drunks and lunatics. Vampire's Kiss and Face Off made him crazy, and leaving Las Vegas and Racing with the Moon made him an alcoholic. 
And when your reputation is more in being able to react oddly to regular situations or react at all to unrealistic ones, you're more likely to see yourself in films with weird premises. Take Jim Carrey. I'm not doing an episode on him because his career is legitimately checkered enough so that I can't do that. Dumb and Dumber showcases his lowbrow side, his fire marshal bill side, his making funny faces for the camera side. But he can be a serious actor when the movie calls for it. The Truman Show is based on a cool premise, and he wasn't bad at being a normal man in an odd situation, but the best example here is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I checked it out, and the fact that Jim Carrey's the lead doesn't ruin the interesting premise. He can play a straight man. It is actually one of the less eccentric ones in the movie. Now, I'm torn on this one, but I've got a date. I could have picked March 23rd, 2003. That date was the award ceremony for the last time Nicolas Cage was ever offered an Academy Award for a performance. And he lost to Adrian Brody. Since he was never nominated for the award ever again, it could be seen as the point where he stopped feeling Hollywood's foot on his neck and started to cut loose into every project he could find. And there's one film between this date and my second date that could be seen after his golden period of traditional acting. Oh, Cage is not a traditional man in the slightest. Hollywood, you should have known that. No, it's not National Treasure, which wasn't bad, but was totally Disney, and you could tell Cage was suppressing his acting down to a Keanu Reeves level. In The Weatherman, though, he... Man, I'd like to put my face in there. Right in there. Wow, progressive writers, that is totally how all men think. Maybe they're actually channeling Cage for that one, but this one really wasn't his acting as much as the writing. So the date that Nicolas Cage jumped the awesome shark is September 1st, 2006, at around 1.10 a.m. Assuming this thing had a midnight premiere, that's the first time the general public was able to see the last half hour of Cage's masterwork of acting. The Wicker Man. Oh man, it's not like there weren't clues from the beginning, what with the random shark reference and... Phallic symbol, phallic symbol. <laughs> Joseph DeCruz's interpretation of an Eminem song. But man, he kicks into high gear when it gets towards the end. First, he does this. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, how to get burned? How to get burned? I don't know. Tell me. Yes, she'll be sure to answer you if you keep interrupting her. Man, I wonder what it would look like if Nick Cage worked for McDonald's. Hi, I'd like a number nine. Do you want fries with that? 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 Yes, yes, okay, yes. Then he goes around punching women, wearing a bear suit, getting his legs broken, and then the bees. Oh, not the bees. Murder! Oh, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Oh, not my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Bees? No bees. Bees? Can't you just see this becoming a billion different memes in 2006 when the internet was just getting very, very used to the idea of making memes? And then they burn him to death. Well, I personally wouldn't have used this music for this scene. I would have used... Come on, you guys knew that was coming. Wait. The world is a vampire. Okay, I think I'm done. Wait, wait, one more, one more. Iris, as part of the soundtrack of the movie City of Angels, became a number one hit for a record number of weeks. The movie was mediocre, but at least we got a good Goo Goo Dolls song out of it. Representing upstate New York, guys. And the rest of Cage's career, as we say, is history. Ghost Rider, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Hair being a bird. Cage, now free from his cage, PUN! ...of making conventionally attractive movies, now can make any movie he wants. And he wants to make every single movie he is given. 2006, the year Nicolas Cage jumped the shark.